Hello everybody, this is Intrepid83 and welcome back to Let's Play White Knight Chronicles 2. Alright, so we've got some more errands to tackle today, so let's uh, get started. Alright, and who, where do we want to start? Um, yeah, not there. Let's, uh, let's head back down to where we spoke to Guthard last time. Yeah, we've got, uh, I guess the last time we got a bigger dozen of these errands left to do, so, yeah. <laughs> well. Plus one. One that we should be able to finish up. One that we have had on hand for quite some time now. <laughs> All right. Sorry, Elder. Alright, let's talk to Gothard. Hmm, you folk, please honor an old knight by listening to his tale. I have an apprentice by the name of Fabian. The boy is not without talent, but he lacks devotion. It makes re training rather a chore. Fabian's father, Julian, was also my student. He was brilliant, hailed as one of the greatest knights Balinor ever knew. But Julian is dead, and Fabian hates me for it. I do not blame him, for I might as well have killed his father with my own hands. What would have happened? Even so, I wish to make Fabian into a fine knight. I am responsible for his father's death. Oh, I have a duty to the boy. Please, ask Fabian for his thoughts on the matter. I must know, but I cannot ask directly. Uh, sure. That's a, that's a rough situation to be in. I'm sure it had something to do with uh, his own duties to the kingdom that resulted in his father's passing. But let's talk to Fabian here. So Godhard asked you to speak with me, did he? Hmm. Well, I've got plenty to say to him, most of which isn't suitable for decent company. But one thing in particular really sticks in my, in my craw. Godhard always thinks he's right. The man's so insufferably upright and snooty that he can't tolerate the mistakes of others. Gods, what a hypocrite. He wouldn't believe the mistakes he's made. Just thinking about him makes me sick. Go bother Beatrice or something. She's taken more than enough of the old man's blather. I'm sure she'll have plenty to say on the matter. Uh, I hope it had something to do with the job. But, alright, uh, let's go talk to Beatrice. And Beatrice, I believe, is all the way down there. F12. <clears throat> Pardon me. This war must be ended swiftly and decisively. I love how well, quite a few of the errands that we've had to go through so far have done a, at least a very a decent to uh, good job at world building. Because obviously doing these back and forth quests, can I can definitely see the uh, the uh, the lack of enjoyment of them. But there are have there have been a few that have as simple as they are. Just the the context of them, the the content of them as well. Just I feel like, especially this one in particular, really gives uh, adds to the world building. Let's talk to Beatrice here. Gotthard and Fabian. Well, Fabian and I live in the same building, so that I hear Gotthard yell a lot. The man has no indoor voice. <laughs> My master told me that Gotthard Gotthard was once a guardsman and a captain. At that, Fabian sure lucked out, if you ask me. The way those two carry on, they remind me of father and son. A bickering father and son, but still. Of course, I doubt they'd see it my way. Yeah. <laughs> Understandable, I guess. Alright, well, let's uh, head back to Guthard and uh, relay the information. Because, yeah, they're just the, uh, the stories that some of these errands tell. They feel like they really fit in this world, you know. In the uh, the context of the world, maybe it's just me, but yeah, it's just been a few now that I've really enjoyed. And 
and uh, yeah, I've tried to uh, voice my opinion on the matter whenever they came up. But of course, there have been a few where it's been <sighs> seemed like a chore, you know. But for the most part, they've been seen. They seem to be entertaining in their own right. Because yeah, I feel like it's kind of a fine line with Aaron with a side quest like this, where it's very much just a go here, do this kind of thing, and come back. But I guess it, if it was completely um, unrelated to what's going on in the world, I could definitely see that being a, a negative. But uh, yeah, but anyways, all right, let's talk to Godhard here. Father and son, she says. My wife left me long ago, so I have no children of my own. Never thought of Julian or Elvie as my children. But I have known Fabian since the day he was born. Perhaps that is why. Father and son, though. Hmm. No, it is nothing. Forgive me for sending you all across town. Accept this as my thanks. And for that, he gives us an earth stone. And not only just the the errands themselves, but yeah, more than a few times we've gotten rewards from them that have uh, we've been grateful to have later on. So yeah. All right. So yeah, we got the earth stone there, and it looks like we got another one that popped up. Uh, so let's talk to Fabian. Oh, it's you. That insufferable old man still treats me like a stupid kid. He refuses to accept that I can fight, my own, fight on my own, as if I didn't prove that when the mage I invaded, to say nothing of all the hunting runs. I never asked him to protect me on the field. Gods, he thinks he knows everything. Uh. Alright. What do you say, Godhard? That boy, how many times must I tell him that arrogance kills? He has enough pride for ten men, and I'm certain it will come back to bite him. You do me another service, I must ask you to have a duel with my apprentice. No, not a duel to the death. Rather, a contest to see who can return with a wind beast tail first. Fabian, are you ready for this, or aren't you? I assume your challenger here is ready, correct? Okay. This errand. This one, I am kind of... I do have a, a so-called plan for getting this wind beast tail, but... If anybody knows of a better way to do it, please let me know in the comments or what have you. Because, yeah, the Wind Beast to it, well, if you've got one, if you happen to have gotten one, uh, happen to have gotten one from fighting any uh, Megalotigris, you're, you're laughing. You don't have to worry about that. You can just give it to him. However, this particular drop only drops from a, a tier 2 Megalotigris. In other words, tier 2 Megalotigris is guild rank 12 or guild rank 13. Uh, do I have one? Uh, it doesn't look... Oh, wind Beast main. Yeah, I don't see any Wind Beast tail. Alright, so... The frustrating thing about this particular component the wind beast tail is that it has a, only a seven percent drop rate from the megalo tigris so yeah you could be there for a while killing megalo tigris for grinding um as it stands what's my guild rank at we are at guild rank 13 which means this quest alone could very well stagnate our ability to continue hunts um so, yeah, this is one of those errands here where <laughs> it abruptly takes a shift from being world building and understandable to being outright cruel and unusual punishment, I guess you could say. <laughs> but yeah, so guild rank 12 to 13, Megalo Tigris, we're at guild rank 13 here with a 7% drop rate. So yeah, that's basically what we're going to have to be uh, focusing on. But yeah. But we've got other things to do here, so we'll I'll deal with that another time. Um, hopefully, we'll be able to get one in short order. Seven percent chance—that's what, one in twenty, roughly, a little less than that, or a little, or yeah, whatever, between one in twenty and one in ten. So, yeah. 
Alright, so next up. We want to speak to... Yeah, Night School is the, uh, the one we just got. Uh, let's sort them according to area for a change. Alright. Uh, no, we don't want to speak to her. Please, no. Anne-Marie, there we go. All right, Anne Marie, I believe, is right up here in the uh, the noble quarters. In the noble quarter. So yeah, if you have any tips on the best place to get the uh, wind beast tail, um, please let me know. Because yeah, as it stands right now, my only plan is just to fight Miguel Tigris over and over and over again. <laughs> so, yeah. And I'm not even sure if the Georama, you can get them through there. So, any tips would be greatly appreciated to help speed that process up. But anyways, to keep the, the LP moving, you know. Anne-Marie here. Greetings, are you an adventurer? I have a small request, if you would be kind enough to hear it. Yeah, sure, what's up? I was at the castle that fate fateful night when the Magi came. Ugh, during the Prince and Cisna's banquet. You know what happened next. Yes, we do. I tried to flee, but the blaze blocked me. A figure in black armor suddenly appeared, his sword glistening like a waning moon. I ran as fast as my petticoats would allow, but to no avail, the, black, the figure in black easily caught up to me. Oh gods, he lifted his blade, aiming for a clean blow on my bare neck. But then a gallant knight appeared, shielding me from the black terror with naught but his own body. Oh, the sight of him. Rimmed by firelight, he drove the usurper back with a blinding storm of lance blows. He took my hand and led me through the roaring flames, his jet-black hair streaming behind us. Somehow he remade it. But alas, my mind was in such a state I could not even ask his name, much less offer the proper thanks. Please seek out this good Sir Knight. I cannot recall his vis visage, but I can still see his hair, black as a still pool at midnight. If you ask Sergius, he might be able to prove some clue provide some clues. He's the best source of information there is. I would very much like to thank this man. Please find him for me. Oh, wow. Yeah, absolutely. And who knows, maybe we can arrange a, arrange a uh, reconciliation. Um, <laughs> I really feel like that's the wrong word for it, but... Need a rest? Anyways, the actual word is escaping me. I feel like I know the word, just... Yeah, it's, it's on break right now. <laughs> Alright, so Sergius... I believe he is down in J8. Oh no, sorry, I8, there we go. Seems to always get those parts of the uh, the main square mixed up. There he is. Talk to him, the mostly mythical black-haired knight who allegedly rescued him, Anne-Marie. Sure, I'm curious about who that was. He's like a mystery inside a riddle wrapped up in plate armor. But you know, you shouldn't shouldn't you be asking people who are actually there that night? I'm pretty sure that big boar Detlev said he was near the castle when it all went down. He's probably boozing it up at Rapaji's at this time of day. Go talk to him if you're that desperate to know. Alright, so I guess we're heading off to Rapaji's and looking for a Detlev. The real battle is being fought here by the townspeople. There he is. Good sir. Story going around about the knight with jet black hair? I wasn't inside the castle, so I'm no eyewitness or anything, but I have a theory about who it might have been. A pal of mine named Wong saved someone's life during the attack. He got promoted to captain for his trouble. That's not all, though. He was on guard duty at the castle that night, and he specializes in the lance. Ooh, that's a good lead. It almost all adds up. Only thing is, Wong doesn't have black hair. Not even close. Still, I suppose it couldn't hurt to ask him about it, right? He'll be guarding the gate to the eastern block today. Oh, okay. So I guess we'll uh, go see if we can uh, track him down. So he's up in uh, J8 there, so let's go see if we can track him down. Different expressions these days. Is 
that Captain Wong. It is. Wow, no kidding. <laughs> About the hair. Many apologies, but only nobility are allowed past this point. Wait, what? Did I rescue a young noblewoman? I... Yes, I did. I saw someone about to be struck down by a magi and my body just... How should I put this? I just reacted. I barely remember the incident. It was all over before I even realized what was happening. My hair? No doubt it was co coated in soot and grime. That's why it looked black. So the girl's name is Anne-Marie. How pretty. Yeah. Well, there we go. Well, sounds like he uh, remembers doing such a thing. I wonder if it really was him. Well, aside from the black hair, ignoring the uh, discrepancy about that, about that, you know, seems like it might be the the man she's looking for. So let's go talk to her. You found him, good adventurer. What's that? He's a soldier, not a knight. His hair is blonde, not black. By the gods, was anything I said about him correct? <laughs> His name is Wong. A thousand apologies, but I may have trouble you trouble you for one more favor. Oh, wait! I mustn't be so presumptuous. You've already done so much. I will observe the proper decorum and ask again later. You have my most sincere thanks. And for that, she gives us a lump of gold. She literally just pays us. Nice. Thank you very much. Greatly appreciated. But we're uh, we're, to, we're willing to hear you out. Oh, good adventurer. How I have awaited your return. <laughs> I have but a simple favor to ask. I must meet Wong in person. My position demands that I express the proper things. I am certain his duties keep him quite busy, but I may have trouble you to communicate most sin my most sincere desire to speak with him. Yeah, sure. Why not? And yeah, the errand we just completed was called. Uh, where is it? <laughs> the Dark Knights. <laughs> uh, and the previous one was. Yeah, the Angry Apprentice was the the first one we did. And then Night School is the one for the uh, Wind Beast Tale. All right. Let's go carry uh, Anne-Marie's wishes to Captain Wong. And yeah, this one is called... Wong's Way. Yeah, these uh, errands here, the errands with uh, Godhard and Fal uh, Guardsman Falco, Godhard, Godhard and Fabian, those were all, I guess you could say, nested errands, so each one unlocked the next. And sort of like this, the Dark Knight Aaron completing that unlocked this one. So, yeah, that we're on. Wong's Way. Of course it's alright. I've been hoping to see Emery again myself. To be honest, though, I'm I'm not really sure how to infra act in front of her. So I have an idea. I have a buddy named Aramis who runs a theater troupe. I've known him all my life, actually. Someone must have told him I rescued Anne Marie because he promised to give me give me advice if I ever got to see her again. Did you tell him I'll be meeting her? He's probably shooting the breeze at Rapachi's wine with Detlef right about now. Oh, okay, sure. Let's go talk to him. And yet another errand that is seemingly detached gives you a bit of a break from the events of the story so far. But still very much feels like it's it fits in this world, you know. As we all know what happened on Princess's birthday, so <laughs> and there's definitely uh things that happened during that, so yeah. Is Aramis. Well, well, who would have guessed the two star-crossed lovers would actually get together? That fella needs some advice. I'm gonna tell him. And raise nobility. You need to class up your act. That should do it. I'm sure he'll be just fine. 
Would you mind checking on Wong after he meets a girl? I'm dying to know if he can muster the guts to take the next big step. <laughs> He's got somebody in his corner, I guess. Alright. So I guess we just head back to Captain Wong. Oh, wrong button. Uh, yeah, let's go ask him. Yeah, errands like this really make you feel like they really pull you in deeper in, into a immersion with the story, with the game, into the world. Yes, I went to meet Anne-Marie. I tried to do exactly what Arama said, conduct myself with dignity and respect. But how could an oaf like me possibly act all prim and proper like some perfumed noble? Oh gods, it was all so awkward. She must think me a total boof. Bore, sorry. <laughs> Let's uh, try to get a better... Uh, not really... Just go tell Aramis the whole sorry story for me, will ya? I can't summon the thought of doing it myself. Ah, uh, well. That doesn't mean she doesn't care. I'll put it that way. One thing about love is that when you truly love someone, when you are absolutely in love with the person, the person who the person who they are, you could look at the worst picture of them, you know, maybe like just waking up from a hangover, you know, done nothing to, uh, you know, for their hair or anything like that. Or any to make themselves look, I guess you could say, uh, anything that doesn't say I just woke up in the morning. And you could look at them when they are fully decked out in finery, fine wear, you know. If you truly, if you are truly in love with that person, those two pictures will look the exact same to you. And by that I mean the first one, the before, the before shot will always look like the after shot. So to speak. Ah, I knew Mr. Wong could act like Mr. Wright. Don't get me wrong, his awkwardness isn't a flaw, it's part of his charm in fact. Asking him to put on princely airs is like training a basilisk to pay, play fetch. Wong just has to be Wong. <laughs> That's his best bet, indeed. Why did they give him the opposite advice? Simple. I knew it would make him so befuddled that he'd show his true colors. Interesting. Reverse psychology, I guess. Don't believe me? Go see what Anne Marie thought of him. If she was really, if she really was disappointed. Well, then she was never interested in the good captain to begin with. Just her tall, tar, dark-haired, and handsome, handsome fantasy knight. All right. Seems like Aramis has the right idea as well. Hear what Anne Marie thought. How'd it go? Ah, I could have entered her. Thank you so much for your help. Because of your tireless efforts, I was able to meet Wong and express my gratitude in person. I cannot pretend that he quite measured up to my expectations, but I could tell he was very kind and honest. You must allow me to show you the proper gratitude as well. This has been within my family for generations. I have no brothers who may join the knighthood, so I hope you can make some use of it. 
Please accept it with my gratitude. I am truly thankful for your help with Wong. And for all of that, we, she gives us a family heirloom, the Spectral Mail. Let's take a look at it. Uh, okay, so it's... Yeah. yeah, there's the Silver Cat Eyes. Here's a Spectral Mail. Level 44, 36 defense, 4 resi magic resistance. Heavily resistant to Earth. Uh, some dexterity as well. That could be useful. The only problem is... It's medium weight. <laughs> so, yeah. Chances are... Yeah. No, none of these three will be wearing it, unfortunately. But, anyways. Alright, so I believe that should be it as far as that chain of errands goes. So, yeah. Um... Wong's way, yeah. All right, so yeah, going back to the whole night school thing here with the uh, wind beast tail. Please, if like I'm going to, it's going to be a few videos that we, as we uh, go through these errands here. So please, if you have any tips on how I can speed up the process, other than just fighting Miguel Tigris over and over again, I feel like probably the best place to do so would be uh, heading south from Albana. You know that little. Uh, um, uh, cul-de-sac, I guess you could say, like, it's pretty much just straight south of the exit, uh, to the, the sand maze there, where there's usually either, like, a, a fire giant in there, and I think there's a, there was a chest in there as well, still so just a slightly indented area of the desert there, um, yeah, I can think of that being the most, uh, convenient place, or even the, uh, the area, area coming out of the Flander Trail, uh, Obviously, there's a save point right there at the the exit. Just cross the bridge, and then you can get, run into uh, a a large spawn there as well, uh, which can be uh, Miguel Tigris as well. And there's a uh, harvest point there that we could be making use of as well for another particular errand. So, yeah, those are my two thoughts on where is the best place to uh, go after the Miguel Tigris. But again, if you know any be anything better, please, please let me know in the uh, comments below, especially for the the veterans of the game. Um, obviously, <laughs> not being not having access to any multiplayer or anything like that could be a problem. But uh, hopefully we can uh, get something that's a bit more reliable than just fighting the Galatigris over and over again. But uh, yeah, but if we have to, we have to and we will because, well, we have to if we want to keep doing hunts. So yeah. All right, so yeah, I'll leave that to you guys. And until next time, thank you all so very much for watching. And uh, if you enjoyed the video, please hit like on your way out. Really helps uh, support the series and the channel here. And I humbly thank you for your support in that regard. And if you have not subscribed yet, why not head on over to the channel, see if there's anything there that will uh, inspire you to hit the uh, the subscribe button. And I uh, yeah. and if you do, well, I'll see you in the next one. But until next time, thank you all so very much for watching. Take care, be blessed, and have a good one. And I think I'll just probably... Well, where's the best place for me to save it? Uh, you know what? Where are we? Uh, you know what? I think I'll probably meet you down at the uh, save point down in uh, G10 there, outside Rapaches there. So, yeah. Alright, so I'll meet you there next time.